Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K. I'm Hydrogen Man. Okay guys, due to a lot of questions about this subject, let's talk today about oxygen and hydrogen being mixed together as, and using it as inhalation versus only hydrogen inhalation. I'm not gonna bring hydrogen water into the conversation, but I will say if I had to choose which one's the most therapeutic, based on the science, it really appears that it's actually hydrogen water. But today we're gonna to be talking more about the gases today and the inhalation. But I also will say that based on just kind of the experiences and everything that I've seen in regards to all this, I've seen that combining hydrogen water and drinking that regularly and then doing hydrogen gas inhalation and doing both of those has really ultimately produced the best results that I've personally seen. But today we're just gonna talk about the inhalations of these different types of gases and ultimately the different types of benefits. So all right guys, let's go ahead and get started. The reason this question is actually coming up is due to a study that was done in Japan about using oxygen and hydrogen together. This particular study was done at Keio University. I knew about this study. It's an interesting study. I mean, it was done on post-cardiac arrest syndrome patients and people who had had strokes. But here's the deal, guys. They actually brought hydrogen into the mixture to see the kind of benefits that it could produce. But the reason that they were giving oxygen, guys, is because these people are pretty much on life support. I mean, if you're not gonna be able to breathe, you need to give a patient oxygen. So they had to do it. So that's one of the reasons that they were doing it. And oxygen is really good for like emergency medicine. It does give you a nice little boost but I'm gonna share a few things with you guys that I think are important to know. So here we go. The thing about oxygen, I wanna give you guys an example. Like I'm gonna use professional athletes, for example, because there are certain professional athletes that use oxygen in some of their training. And so if you're a professional athlete and you have like a professional trainer, and this is what they actually do. They would actually give the athlete less oxygen. And you might be thinking, that sounds kind of strange. That's right though. They would give them less oxygen when they're doing proper training. It's all like hyperbaric chambers and high altitude training. The reason that they do this, guys, is because what ends up happening is the body adapts to less oxygen by producing more red blood cells because it wants to maintain certain levels of oxygen in the blood, right? The blood saturation levels. Then later on what they do, and this is a proper protocol, then later on what they do is they'll actually boost the oxygen and they'll like give you more and it gives you a nice boost. The thing is that you do not want to do it regularly, even if it is with mixed with hydrogen, guys. And I'll explain why also here in a second. But what I, what I'll, basically this is what's going to happen. I want you guys to kind of understand this and think for yourselves for a second. If you give less oxygen and your body produces more red blood cells, what do you think is gonna happen when you give it more oxygen? Now, you're gonna get that flood of oxygen, but if you do that regularly, your body's most likely gonna adapt to it because that's what it does, the body adapts. And if you're ad adapting, <laughs> excuse me, to more oxygen, my concern would be that then you're making less red blood cells, then you're gonna actually be dependent on this additional oxygen regularly. And again, oxygen's really used for like emergency medicine, it's a nice boost, in fact, I think it's actually a little interesting that it would be similar to something like an anabolic steroid. And you may be thinking, what, a steroid? Let me explain actually. See, when you use an anabolic steroid, it helps boost like your testosterone levels, which gives you a nice boost. The thing is, is the reason you don't wanna use it regularly is because if you give your body a, this additional testosterone regularly, your body will actually stop production of its own natural testosterone. So I really think that it's a much better idea, and they have specific protocols for things like that also. But in my opinion, it's a much better idea to bring up your natural testosterone levels naturally, not synthetically. Same thing for oxygen, guys. It's better for you to bring up your oxygen levels naturally, whether it's with proper food and diet because of how it affects your pH and therefore your oxygen levels, uh, maybe with proper exercise, even some proper breathing techniques, things of that nature. If you're gonna use oxygen therapy, which is not necessarily a bad idea, but if you're gonna do it, what I personally would do is load up on hydrogen first. I'd be doing the hydrogen water, hydrogen inhalation for at least a month, and then you would do a proper oxygen protocol only for a specific designated period of time, and then you would go off of it again. And that's the way that I would definitely recommend it, but not regularly. I would definitely not recommend using oxygen regularly. And if you do that, I've also seen some research where it shows that the, that the benefits of it are short-lived. You'll get benefits for a little while, of course, because again, it gives you that boost, just like a steroid would, but again, you wouldn't want to do it regularly. 
In fact, there's a really interesting story that I hadn't shared with you guys. It happened many months ago, and I found it quite interesting. It was about a gentleman who had constant problems with having the proper saturation levels of oxygen in his blood. This is where it got interesting. He had these problems for many years. He had tried many different things, including inhaling oxygen, which was really interesting because apparently when he would inhale the oxygen, his saturation levels of oxygen in his blood would not even go up. And I thought that was really quite odd, but this is where it got really interesting. Apparently he knew somebody who literally uses the same machine that I do, the Hydrofix, and he had seen it sometime and he drank some hydrogen water, quite a bit from what I recall, but I don't remember the exact amount. I think it was half a pitcher or something. When they tested his blood oxygen levels later on in that day, for the first time in like a very long time, he actually got elevate, he got a higher level of oxygen. And that's why I ended up receiving the email and I thought, well, this is actually kind of odd. You know, why would hydrogen cause the oxygen levels to go up. Of course, I did a lot of research on that, and I'll probably go into it more some other time, but I really think it has to do with the way that hydrogen affects the pH within the blood, so it allowed the body to utilize it more effectively, you know, to get proper oxygen levels. And I think ultimately that's the best way to go, because as far as I can see when it comes to oxygen, a lot of times when you don't have the proper oxygen levels within your blood, it's because you have some other issue that's going on in your body. So it's better to rectify that issue so that you can naturally have the proper levels instead of just giving yourself additional oxygen regularly then your body's going to get used to that and then you'll probably have a really hard time without an oxygen machine or something of that nature so i really hope that this kind of clarified things for you guys in fact let me see if i missed anything because i really think oh yeah well this is one other thing you know as compared to oxygen hydrogen is something also that i've noticed that you can use regularly it's very safe you really want to get the proper levels of hydrogen within the body it really functions a lot like a vitamin or a mineral where you want the proper levels regularly and we do produce less and less as we age and so to get it in your body and maintain a nice proper healthy level so that everything's working properly in the body works really well so with hydrogen it's very interesting how it works so different than oxygen again and plus when we're breathing in we're getting a lot of oxygen when we're breathing in but we're not really getting just about any hydrogen when we're breathing you know in our regular atmosphere which is probably you know why it's a good idea to supplement it where oxygen again we're breathing in it all the time so not the best idea to get your body used to having this additional oxygen regularly so that's kind of one of the drawbacks about oxygen you don't want to use it regularly but hydrogen you can use regularly it's safe and it's more of an antioxidant which is a really great thing as compared to something that's like oxidizing and gives you a nice little boost but again periodically and really you really have to know how to use it guys otherwise in my opinion it can do more harm than good which is the reason I'm actually making this video because a lot of people have been asking this question. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna be bringing another video explaining with more detail about proper hydrogen levels. A lot of people have been asking about this and different equipment and different numbers, but I'm gonna go into that into another video. So if you like this video and the information made sense to you and you found it helpful, Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Let me know that by, you know, supporting the video, supporting the channel, and just letting me know by, you know, keeping things positive also. And that's it, guys. Also, share the video if you think that some people out there might find it interesting. And yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you found it helpful. I'll see you next time on the next video.